Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, this is from a university newspaper, the Minnesota Daily. Frequently the university newspapers because the college campus is so politically correct. They've got stories you'd never see in a regular newspaper. The Minnesota Daily, and they have a book review section apparently, and here is a book review from that newspaper. Despite the women's movement, we still live in a world in which women, their anatomy and appearance, are sold as objects. But according to Ariel Levy's book, Feminist Chauvinist Pigs, Women and the Rise of Raunch Culture, it's increasingly women, not men, who are buying. They're buying and buying into the bikini waxes, the boob jobs, the Howard Stern show, the misogynistic porn, the whole girls gone wild philosophy. These post-feminist girls and women whom Levy calls female chauvinist pigs say they find empowerment in sex, strength in objectification. They're unflinchingly explicit and boldly body. Levy also thinks they're sadly mistaken. The author of this book review, Erin Adler, says her book and her analysis is intelligent and thorough. She posits that because many women need to prove they are not polite, powerless, girly girls, and want to literally do all the things men do, they increasingly conduct themselves according to stereotypes of masculine sexuality. Apparently this means porn, another P word that I'm not allowed to say on the radio, and perversion. And if you don't like it, get ready to be labeled a prude. A woman's tolerance for raunchiness is now a, quote, litmus test for uptightness. The options are binary. You're either raunchy or repressed. Levy makes sense of current cultural trends even as they are happening. Linking chasms in the 60s and 70s feminist movement to the Playboy Mansion and gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender culture to adolescent sex practices. It's a skill that few individuals and even fewer authors possess. While reading her commentary, I was prone to alternately enthusiastic and angry outbursts. Every woman should read this book. No, every human should. Why isn't a concise history of the women's movement to the United States taught in schools? Middle school girls are doing what to high school boys on buses? The most shocking chapter is aptly titled Pigs in Training. Can you get the, the point of view of this book reviewer, by the way, here? Pigs in training. It's here that Levy takes on current adolescent and sometimes pre-adolescent female behavior. She explains the disturbing and colorful urban legend of rainbow parties in which middle school girls throw a co-ed slumber party, each girl selecting a different color of lipstick. Girls perform oral sex on boys until a veritable rainbow remains on each male. No similar evidence appears on girls' bodies because the act is not reciprocated. See, that's the problem. It's not that the 12-year-olds are giving oral sex to boys. It's that they're not reciprocating. Hmm. The girls' actions are shocking, but their words about their behavior, their bodies, and their emergent sexuality are, well, mind-blowing. With Levy, middle school and high school girls discuss their competitiveness with other girls over weight, their hotness, and who has the sluttiest reputation, all of which are good things. They admit to making out and performing lap dances with their female friends, not for enjoyment, but because, quote, the guys will like it. They will. Yet they are pathetically in the dark about their own sexuality and desire. As Levy said, we are doing little to differentiate their sexual desires from their desire for attention. Which is Levy's whole point. Female chauvinist pigs might enjoy being one of the guys going to strip clubs and watching porn. 
It may be good fun for them to refer to other women as pussies, tally the number of sexual partners they have, but what these women experience when they do these things is not power. It is simply oppression in sheep's clothing. This artifice isn't surprising given that the reality of porn stars and strippers is based on faking from breast size to arousal and orgasms. As Levy observed, linking porn to consumerism, because I was paid to, is not the same as I'm taking control of my sexuality. Because the book is only 200 pages long, questions remain and much is left out. She glaringly omits the contribution of women of color to the women's movement and their eventual branching off except for an obligatory mention of somebody named Shirley Chisholm, former United States Congress person from New York State. She ignores the way the porn industry affirms only a blonde, white, thin standard of beauty while exoticizing other racial groups. Further, she neglects to explore the effect raunch culture has had on masculinity. Levy has succinctly identified and uh, named a phenomenon that is undoubtedly present. However, perhaps she is a bit dramatic. I know that actual empowered females of all ages exist today. They are a positive product of, rather than a backlash to, 60s and 70s feminism. These women are comfortable with their identity and their own sexuality, whether gay or straight. They just aren't as, well, flamboyant as female chauvinist pigs. Above all, though, Levy is right to assert that unexamined contradictions regarding sex are everywhere. And that until female executives stop referring to assertiveness as acting like a man, and female athletes stop posing in Playboy to, quote, prove that athleticism is not at odds with being sexy, women will never achieve the respect they deserve. They might be seen as more sexually liberated, forever feigning arousal like a veteran stripper but they will never be viewed as intelligent, funny, or, as Levy said, themselves. Now, that's the book review. The book is Female Chauvinist Pigs, Women and the Rise of Raunch Culture by someone named Ariel Levy. Now, this is uh, something I've been saying for a very long time, but uh, I don't see it as uh, the end of the world, like the uh, author of this uh, book review. Uh, I do believe that women do not want to be lumped in with feminism, they don't want to be lumped in with lesbians. Uh, what women want, above all, is to be attractive to men. To give men what they want, so they can get what they want, which is security, money, children, whatever. Women will do what they have to do, and they will compete with each other. They will compete with each other, providing sexual favors. They will compete, beginning now, apparently at like 10 or 11 years old, they will compete giving sexual favors, the boys or men. They will compete uh, to be thinner, hotter, more attractive, whatever. They will not compete. Af uh, they will not compete athletically. They will not compete uh, academically. They will compete on the basis of who's sexier, who's hotter, who's better in bed. And um, I, I, I say that it's based on low self-esteem and that men need to find the hottest possible women with the lowest possible self-esteem. That is a quinella. That is a perfect universe. Hot chicks who have such low self-esteem, they'd even have sex with me. Perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Most of the time, women who write books like this are lesbians, sympathize with lesbians, are bisexual... Uh, you know, they think that uh, some of these authors have said things like, you know, a man having consensual sex with a woman is rape. That, yeah, that, that actually was a quote from one of these books. I don't know the sexuality or the sexual orientation of this particular author. But I will tell you that um, that is frequently the theme of these feminist books, that uh, women should not be trying to please men sexually. They should not be trying to look hot. There's something somehow wrong with that. They can write all the books they want. The reality? The chicks they're writing about don't read books. They do not consider themselves political. They would never identify with feminism except in rare instances. And by the time women read or even write these books, they're generally 45 years old and above when it's all a moot point anyway. They've passed their expiration dates. You know what I'm talking about, boys. Do you see a problem with the culture as defined by this book review and by the author of this book? Some like it.
1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. God, talking to you is like talking to Mickey Mantle. This is the best, Tom. The Tom Lucky Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Judy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Mr. Likas. How are you? I'm great. I would like to ask you a question. Yeah. I am doing research for a book about men and women, and since you seem to be the guru and the hero for all young gentlemen in all of Los Angeles, what is it that is the worst thing to you about a woman? Now, you say they get fat. After you marry them, you say they do. that they cut their hair short. And well, well the there's a bigger picture, and let me explain it to you. It's, it, each of these are elements of a bigger picture. The bigger okay. picture is that women generally in this country, rather than being sexual, yes. uh, use sexuality as currency in okay. order to get what they want in life, which is to get a man to sign a contract to marry them, uh, to get a sperm donor for their children, and uh, pretty much they use sex as a loss leader, much the way a supermarket. Are you gone? I guess she's still uh, listening out there somewhere. And they use uh, sex as a loss leader and sexual favors as well. The way a supermarket sells a six-pack of Diet Coke for 99 cents uh, at a loss to get you in the store so they can sell you sirloin steak for $18 a pound. That, that's the way it is. That's a much bigger picture than just cutting their hair short and chunking up. It's, 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 it, it's, a, it's a huge picture that we really need to take a look at. 1-800-5800-TOM. Sheila in Vista, California. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. You know what? I don't think that you're wrong. I think that a majority of women do use um, their sexuality as a tool. I am 23, and when I was younger, I, like, I, well, I didn't sleep with anybody until I was 18, but in high school, I felt pressured, mainly especially because my other friends were doing it. Right. Like, you know, messing around guys, and now, it's funny, now that I'm 23, and because, the only reason that I realize this is because most of my friends are actually men. Right. So, and it's it's kept me away from doing things like that. But I think, yes, women completely do use their sexuality instead of just wanting to be sexual sometimes because you want to in your human being. And, but it's more of like, oh, well, if I sleep with my boyfriend, then he'll stay with me longer. And if he stays with me longer and I keep him under my, you know, if I can keep... But you see, here's the irony of what you're saying. That's that's true. Yes. It, I mean, it's not just that women think that. It's true. If a woman does not perform sexually, men will start to wander to other women. That's how it works. So the idea for women is to uh, pretend, in many cases, to be into anything, anytime, anywhere, with anyone, until they get a man to sign the contract. Once he signs the contract, they revert to what they really are interested in, which is uh, spending Just money, shopping. not having to worry about how they look yeah. anymore. Shopping. Right. Not gaining weight. And, and, and watching entertainment tonight. I mean, that, that's yeah. pretty much what we're talking about here. I think you're completely right. Um, I'm sure they... And authors of books like this hate women like you who can see that I'm right. And, and, and who will concede that I'm right. And the thing is, like, my father, like, I was basically brought up, I'm Hispanic, I was brought up traditionally, I, you know, I go home, I cook, I clean, I do the laundry, and, you know, my, I live with my boyfriend, my boyfriend doesn't have a problem if I need help, but, you know, the one thing that we've agreed is I have to stay fit. You know, and things like that, I have to stay attractive, not only for him, but for my own being, you know. Right, but uh, from his point of view, if you don't stay fit, and you don't do the laundry, and you don't do the housework, he will find someone who will, and you know that. Actually, surprisingly, 
I had, I was depressed for six months and didn't do any of it. And he, you know, he was still around. And the thing is, you know, women need to learn that nowadays guys, guys can help you. And they won't say no as long as there's that communication there. And you're, you know, you're really not using him to, because most women, I can't believe it, but most women do just want to settle down and just want to find a man. And, and they'll the they'll thing. mac uh, on their best friend if that'll help get that done. They'll have sex in strange places. They'll do anal yeah. sex. Uh, things they hate. Things that hurt. Things they don't like. They'll do all of them to get a man to sign on the dotted line. Yeah, and I don't. And women just don't realize that you're not. They're not like gaining anything. They're gaining a, a partner, but. They lose so much self-respect that by the time that you reflect on what's happened, because I've been through horrible relationships where I did think that way. I used to be like, oh, my God, if, I, if I'm not the best girlfriend in the world and do everything that this guy wants, he's going to leave me. And you know what? I did everything that most of those guys wanted, and they did leave me. And... Once I realized, hey, you know, I have to do things that I want because I need to be happy and I need to make, and if, as long as I'm happy, that other person's going to be happy. That's the only way that real relationships last. Right. But, but you have to be realistic about what guys want. Guys are hungry, horny, and thirsty. Uh, they're not complicated creatures. No. And what we say, we generally mean, uh, except I love you when we're about to have sex with you. Other than that, we pretty much mean everything we say. There's no hidden meaning in just about any of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thank you, Sheila. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Alex in San Diego on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm okay. Hey, Tom. I was doing basically uh, your report on the book, and I just want to bring a point. These women have to understand one thing, and... Uh, they just have to read on history. Cleopatra had it. Two, two empires. One of the most biggest moments in history, both the Egyptian and the Romans, put them down to their knees. Then you have Joan of Arc that brings the British and the French Empire, bringing them down to their knees. Why? Because they knew what they wanted. They knew how to do it. They didn't need to seek refuge, basically, on all political systems or values. Yeah, uh, being a feminist... Uh, writing feminist literature, taking women's study courses, that is not going to get you a man. It might Absolutely get you another not. woman, exactly. but it is not going to get you a man, and women know it. No, exactly, and I, I agree completely. What they should basically focus on is just on the individual. Come on, right. stop this whole thing. If exactly. the individuals want to have fun, let them do whatever the hell they want. That's right. And, Tom, thank you so much. Come on, bring a little bit of illumination to the rest of the planet, and you're great, bud. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tasha on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Dad. This is Tasha. Hi, um, dear. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I just wanted to say that I have been saying this all along through high school. I went to a really conservative high school Yep. where all the girls that were smart were not fit and a little thicker or whatever. And I knew all along that they one day have to rely on sexuality. Like these. You can usually tell a girl's grades by looking at her. Like these girls were straight A students and, oh, yes, I'm going to get this nerve, business guy, whatever. And so funny now that they're all fat and just doing sexual acts just to get, like, men and stuff. And it's just so funny. I was like, Homely chicks will do absolutely anything in bed. And they, they learn to be good at it because they know there's no other way to get a guy. Exactly. And they keep on doing it over and over and over, hoping that they finally get a guy. But who's going to want to stay with a hidden and critic chick? Uh, I, I think you're right about that. Lex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, the women out there, you guys need to be honest about it. It is so true what he's saying. We are taught from a very young age to use what we have to get what we want. And I'm speaking from experience. My mother told me all the way up, she dressed me a certain way, carry yourself like a lady. And I remember my mother telling me when I got married, never let yourself go. When I had my children, never let yourself go. Because what, what husband wants to come home and, you know, you wind and dine this individual and she was just gorgeous and you come home and it's this, this rag. Right. I'm to the point right now that my husband does not ever 
see me not put together. If I'm as sick as a dog and he's on his way home, I get up, I do my hair, I do my makeup. And as my mother also taught me, if I don't do those things and take care of myself, there's going to be another woman that's going to step in there and catch his eyes and do that for you. That's right. So we shouldn't be blaming these other women or blaming the men that, oh, he cheated on me and he'll eat, he did this. Do your job, because if you don't do your job, someone else is going to step in and do it for you. And that goes for men, too. Do what you need to do, because if you don't, we will go elsewhere. That's exactly right. And I'll get off my soapbox now. Lex, thank you for the call. Christine in San Diego, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Christine. I just wanted to say that I don't necessarily agree with the fact that men are not complicated creatures. They are moody, and they disagree, and if they think they're right, they won't compromise. But there's nothing complicated about it. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. Oh, how is that not complicated? There's nothing complicated about it. We tell you what we want. We tell you what we will do and won't do. That's we don't true. say, and, and and we do not do uh, female tactics, like just being quiet and hoping the other person will notice. That's absolutely not true. I've met men that do that. that the fact that there are exceptions to the rule doesn't mean the rule is not the rule. Well, uh, granted, there are exceptions there, to every rule, dear. But <laughs> generally speaking, we're hungry, we're horny, we're thirsty. There's no hidden meaning in any of it. Well, maybe so in most cases, but I do know... I don't care if there are exceptions to the rule. It's irrelevant. <laughs> to the rule, how can that be irrelevant? Well, because we cannot aim the program at every name in the white pages, dear. We, we cannot say, okay, Alan Albert at 243 Main Street. He uh, is a little more assertive than Alan Stevens at uh, 297 uh, Pine Street. Okay, well, you can't do a show like that. You're talking to a broad audience. You have to speak in broad generalities, especially to broads like you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Tom. I'm here to help, Christine. Thanks. Thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. All the things that you tell guys to do, he has done to me. And he's probably a lot happier now. Without me? Yeah. See, why would you say something like that? The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Los Angeles. I'm 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about a review of a book called Female Chauvinist Pigs. And all this concern that women are doing all kinds of sexual things and trying to look hot to attract men, calling them post-feminists. Oh, it's so terrible. Simone on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Great. Hey, um, I've been listening to your show, and I actually haven't read the book, but I've been listening in. And, well, you might be a hungry thirsty, horny man, or whatever you called it, I don't know if that really represents the whole of mankind. Well, again, so, no one said it represents the whole of mankind. There are exceptions to every rule. I don't. Uh, there are men with two it. heads, you know what I'm saying? There are men with no penis. I mean, believe me, there are exceptions to the rule. This is but generally how men are. I'd like to know where you get your, like, where you get this rule from, other than just... Years of experience, dear. Years of talking to thousands and thousands of men. That's where. Okay. Well, Tom, I And by the way, if men weren't like this, why would there be women acting like this to try to attract men like this? Why would feminist authors be writing books bemoaning the fact that women are trying to attract men this way? Hey, I would submit that men do the same thing for women. You don't see fat, ugly men getting women. Actually, you do. Unfortunately. Actually, you do. Actually, if they have money, power, or fame, you do. There are men who go to the gym and work out and try to... There look are men like that, uh, but guess what? If they have money, power, or fame, they don't have to be as, uh, as uh, aggressive about it. They don't. That's, that's an unfortunate social standard. That's just the way it is, dear. I don't care. I don't deal with what's fortunate or unfortunate. I deal with what is. Okay, well, it is a social standard. Th that, exactly. There is a double standard. Women have to look hot. Men just have to have money, power, or fame. Well, they don't have to. If they have money, power, or fame, it doesn't matter what they look like. Women don't have to look hot just to get someone. Uh, they have to look hot to get somebody who makes a decent living. By the way, we've documented this with numbers and statistics on this program. All right, well, women women who weigh more than 150 pounds are much less likely to get a guy who makes a good paycheck. Women who are single mothers are much more likely to be with a guy with low education and a low paycheck. 
That's these are matter. these are statistical it's facts, huh? It's just a matter of basic human attractiveness, basic sexual. Uh, really, it isn't. Water seeks its own level, dear, and it's not just a matter of attractiveness because there's more to a person than what they look like, especially with men. Uh, women will yeah, see a man. Ta women will see a man totally differently if he has makes a good living. If he has the potential to make good living. If he's a professional, like a doctor, an architect, an attorney, uh, or if he's famous. Okay. Well, I guess my point is. Do you think that I'll if Do you think that if Mick Jagger worked at In and Out at the, at the drive-through window that he would get the kind of women he gets because he's Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones? I guess my point is... I'm asking a question. That's a yes or a no answer. It's not a yes or a no Yes, answer. I just gave you a yes or a no question. I don't know Mick Jagger. I don't know if he... Has have you ever seen... you never seen Mick Jagger? Actually, no, I haven't. Not so you've never ever... Have you heard of him? I've heard of him. So you've heard of Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones, but you've never seen him? Yes, but this isn't... A How do you... Wait, wait, wait. How do you live in the United States without seeing commercials on TV for the Rolling Stones, AmeriQuest mortgage commercials, or uh, commercials advertising Rolling Stones albums? How can you be so out of touch with popular culture that you would not know what Mick Jagger looks like? Well, I know you're an older man, but Mick Jagger really isn't the pop culture... Right? I, frankly, I couldn't care less about Mick Jagger, but the Rolling Stones are the highest grossing concert act every time they tour. Personally, yeah, I, personally I couldn't care less about the Rolling Stones, but that's the way it is. Okay, I listen to the Stones. I don't see them in concert. So, but you've never seen a picture of Mick Jagger on, on a CD cover? You've never seen a picture of him? I'm sure I probably glanced at it, but I can't right. tell you what he looks like. All right, dear. There are plenty of other examples. You know what? Uh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton got Angelina Jolie, okay? Well, in all fairness, I think Angelina Jolie would do anything with two legs. Well, there you go. Uh, anyway, you're, you're just being a brick, dear. Everybody in the world has seen Mick Jagger. Whether you think he's old or whether you like the Rolling Stones. And I personally, I'm totally burned out on listening to the Rolling Stones. And if I never heard the Rolling Stones again, I'd be perfectly happy. Perfectly happy. Jesus. <laughs> one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. This is Anna on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Well, I'm glad that you're doing well. Good. And it, actually, it's Ann. But well, uh, I read it off the screen. It says Anna on the screen, so I'll call you Ann. Okay. But it says well, I am Anna. calling because I wanted to make a comment um, for, for uh, the woman that called before this other. Chick, um, about girls who are um, students in high school and in college or wherever they may be. Um, I actually am a, I am, have a master's degree in public administration. I was um, ranked 13 in high school, have a great GPA. I'm a, re a good student, um, but I'm a really, really good-looking woman. I'm actually um, a model. How often does that happen? Well, you Look know, around you. more often than not. Really? So you talk to the other models, and they all got master's degrees, and they're all highly intelligent and highly evolved? Not everybody, but there the are... The vast majority models. of them. There, well, majority... Models are generally of very high IQs and higher intellects. No, not everybody, but there are, a, there are quite a few very mm. smart. How come we never see them on shows when models are being interviewed? Well... I don't know. They're not picking the good ones. Ah, so I see. They pick the. They are. The they're just picking the stupid ones. Well, you never know. Mm -hmm. So, but I just wanted to call and say that there are, you know, models and actresses and singers and beautiful women in general who are intelligent. Uh, generally, and, generally they aren't, dear. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, generally, they don't read the paper or pay attention to what's going on in the world. Well. I guess it is up to the men to actually find, you know, to figure out whether they want an intelligent woman who is beautiful as well or if, whether they just want... A if staff. I could choose between a beautiful woman who is intelligent and well-read and a beautiful woman who just wanted to please me all the time and didn't read the paper, I'd take the latter. Why, why is that? Because I don't want to have to sit home debating politics or... Uh, uh, women generally, uh, that when they are exceptions to the rule and they are younger women who are well-read or really intelligent... Uh, and attractive, they they tend to lord it over you, and they tend to talk about it all the time. You know, like the usual bimbos, you used to go out with, and they, they never shut up about it. And uh, I really have no interest in that. Frankly, if I'm going to have a political conversation, I'd rather save it for a cocktail party or my male friends who do okay, read the paper. well, yeah, but wouldn't it be nice what, for you to sh actually show up, you know, to... 
to a party and say, you know what, this is my girlfriend, whoever, you know, and actually have her participate in your conversation rather than just stand yeah, there. I don't, know, I, I don't know what your experience is, but most intelligent women I've spoken to, and that's a short list under the age of 45, most intelligent women I've spoken to complain that even if they get into a conversation at a party about politics, most men don't listen to them anyway. Well, that's unfortunate for them. So you're But it's true, isn't it? It's uh, maybe at some instances. How yeah, often, if you're that attractive, how often do men want to have a serious political discussion with you? And I'm going to tell you the practical reason why we don't want to. It's because right. anything we say about politics might make it impossible for us to have sex with you. Uh, if, if we say the wrong thing, I don't know, pick things guys might say. Hi, I'm a Republican. Hi, I watch the Fox News Channel. Hi, I'm against abortion. Hi, I, you know, I'm in favor of uh, the right to own guns or anything that might be political in nature. It uh -huh. might ruin the opportunity to have sex. Okay. The last thing a man yeah. wants to do is discuss serious issues with a woman he wants. So, Tom, do you, do you have any female friends at all? Or basically, you just want to um, sleep with beautiful women, and that is the only, that is the only purpose they That's the about. reason to talk to them. That is the only reason why you talk to women, Correct. period. That's it. Well, put it this way. No, no. Okay. Uh, unattractive women, obviously, uh, the, the, the fact that uh, they're uh, sexual is, is non-existent. So uh, maybe unattractive women I might have a serious conversation with, knowing they're more likely to read. Uh-huh. It's true. Well, so basically you've just stated that you do not talk to women unless they're beautiful women and unless you want to get, get, go to bed. No, I mean, if, if I need uh, somebody to help me, uh, uh, you know, with answers to a question or uh, somebody who stays up late studying because they're not out dating all the time or traveling with a man paying their expenses, uh, clearly I might ask, uh, you know, a short, fat, homely woman a question or engage in a political oh, discussion with her to. because she's got plenty of time to read up, bone up on that stuff. Okay, so Attractive women are generally busy doing things, seeing the world, having rich men buy condos for them, and stuff like that. Okay, so what would you, what kind of, what kind of advice would you give a beautiful woman then, Tom? What advice would if, I give if, you? If if you're telling me that men do not want to talk to women, to tell beautiful women, women who are smart. All right, when you meet a man you like, I got two words for you: shut up. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're kidding. I'm dead serious. And have them just talk. You want to be happy? Shut up. Tom, that's just... I don't know. I don't know. You, I don't know. I, you won't take my advice? I know you'll be blabbing on and on incessantly about all the things you know and all the things you've read. But you will turn men off. They will not want to engage in these conversations with you. Okay. Can I ask you another question? Sure. Okay. If you only like to basically be with women, just to not just me. It's most men. Most men. Okay, I'll let, uh, most men. So, what do you not believe in any long-term relationships whatsoever? I mean, I never, I never, I never said that. But okay. I, I believe men should push them off as late as they possibly can. Why is that? Because uh, they should not be paying your bills. Uh, they should not be uh, wasting years of their lives that they could be having fun. They should get it all out of their system. They should also uh, work their way up and become the person they're going to be professionally. In other words, to realize their potential uh, in their professions before settling down so that they can get the hottest, youngest possible chick available. Uh, and also not, uh, not very smart chick. So we'll uh, just sit there and listen to them. Well, put it this way. Uh, you know, uh, maybe, maybe if you're 40 and you get married, you might find a woman who, if I started reading the paper, uh, generally, I find that women don't, and you may be an exception to the rule, but generally women don't read the paper or have informed opinions about things uh, until there are no tampons under the sink. That's pretty much when you can have a serious conversation with a woman. <laughs> BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget, we'll be having a live broadcast. Introduce the Like Cats calendar for 2006 at Vault 350. One week from tomorrow in Long Beach. The Tom Likes Show.